No Good Deed or The House on Turk Street. When the cop Jack Fryer is sent out to recover a teenage girl who will never again be mentioned after the half hour point, she's never more than a MacGuffin in this movie, he accidentally stumbles upon a rather quirky band of bank thieves, if that's even a term. A gang of criminals who intend to rob a bank. There he meets Aaron, a stunning Mila Jovovich, who is the femme fatale in the movie. The brains of the operation, Tyrone, played by a quite threatening Stellan Skarsgård, who manages to be very intimidating even without holding a gun. Hoop, a bit of a slow-witted he's, he's kind of he does the legwork in the operation and Mr. and Mrs. Quarry a World War II veteran pilot who's quite racist and his homemaker wife. This may be their final heist, and the score is ten million dollars. Now for that kind of money, you can expect backstabbing and taking sides. And add to that, Murphy's Law is very much in effect. Everything that can go wrong with this robbery actually does go wrong. The movie is a bit of modern film noir, and as such, it's fairly good. I haven't really seen anything else by this director, but I see that he's done a remake of the excellent noir classic, The Postman Always Rings Twice. So, if that one is good, he does no noir. All the characters are gray, there's no real black and white, even our hero, a fairly restrained Samuel Jackson, and yes, he does get to do one cool speech in this movie, has some negative size, you know, isn't a complete goody-two-shoes. The acting is all very good. Hoop is portrayed by Doug Hutchison, known for The Green Mile, for example, you know, the jerk in the movie. And he does quite well, and he's sometimes the butt of the joke, but Overall, this isn't that funny of a movie. It has some sardonic moments, very fitting for noir, and the occasional joke. But usually it's just the quirk, the awkward situation. You know, these aren't standard criminals, really. And they're, you know, from all over the place, and their personalities are kind of all over the place, also. And the comedy is appropriate in both amount and tone. No one is really completely made fun of, and every character has some purpose. And it is a fairly small cast, other than the thieves, we don't really meet that many characters in this. As they hold Jack the cop hostage, there is a little bit of mind games, but not really as much as you might think. This doesn't really 
always take full advantage of what it has to work with, which is a little unfortunate. And there are, of course, some escape attempts. What really keeps this going is all the twists and turns that the plot takes. Not only does everything go wrong, but, you know, they also have to course correct a bit, and that's all I'm gonna divulge at this point. It's got a bit of a gradual pace. There's no real action, action scenes at least, in this. It is a drama thriller. It's got tension and suspense, but there are no big shootouts or anything. All in all, it's fun if you like film noir and if you like the cast and if you like, you know, quirk, then it might be for you. I would say if this does sound appealing to you, at least a rental, it's a good, enjoyable 90 minutes. I mean, I've watched it twice by now, and even here on the second viewing, it still it had my attention throughout. I'm not sure it's really a surefire buy, you know. You won't necessarily watch this a ton of times. So yeah, this has been Skip Render Buy, and that was my spoiler for review of No Good Deed, also known as The House on Turk Street. Hope